Good morning, saints. Welcome to our service here at Spirit Word Ministries on this glorious day. Yeah, February the 12th, 2023. This is going to be part one of a new series on how to cast out devils. How to cast them out. Now, once you understand this series from top to bottom and inside and out, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. And I'm telling you, um, the church is very much waning and lacking in this area. <clears throat> You're going to find out that most of Jesus' ministry, some people said up to two-thirds of his ministry, was dealing with casting out devils. And some other people say only a half, but either way, that's a lot. So if he was talking a lot about that that was our responsibility, and he told the New Testament church to do this. We know that in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, the first marching order he gave the body of Christ, and my name, and we'll get to all this, you shall cast out devils. Now, why would he tell that to a church that already has a devil underneath their feet? Hmm? Because he knew that this outlaw spirit doesn't always play by the rules. So his defeat needs to be enforced. You and I are the enforcement agents here on this earth. Amen? <clears throat> now, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. I'm going to show you that you cannot cast out devils unless we follow the pattern of Jesus first. He's the master template of all that we do. He's our personhood. He's our identity. So we're going to just follow along with what he's about. Amen? So let's dedicate this, uh, this service and also this new series to him right now. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, that you give the revelation knowledge from the throne room to me, to the saints, that they're going to take this teaching, Lord God, and <clears throat> where there's been stumbling blocks or obstinacy or a lack of breakthrough, we're going to see some breakthroughs once we dislodge the, the obstacle, which is obviously the devil. So, Lord, we're going to count on you. We're going to count on the great Holy Spirit within us. And we're going to go forth, Lord God, with the revelation knowledge and encourage your saints, Lord God, to use these principles, these tools, and these techniques that are all in your word today and to follow the pattern of Jesus. Amen. So just think about the master and put him before you. Just drink him in, breathe him in. If you have any cares, just roll them all out. Let them take them. <clears throat> The Lord wants your undivided attention in this series. There's a lot to cover. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Roto sinakra, sanakra. Oh, my people. Roto sinakra, sanakra, sisamapapa. My precious body, understand and know this. Yes, in these last days, especially in these times, where the enemy knows that his time and his days are short. And he's coming through many portals here and there. And I must have my people at a threshold, at the front end, of knowing what is going on here in this earth today. And my people, this church, the body of Christ, have been waning and very, very much lacking in the arena of casting out devils and controlling them through binding and loosing and binding up the strong man and all that I've said in my word. And my people have gone through seasons and periods of frustration doing what you know to do, and yet things have not broken through. Any delay is a demonic delay. Know that. And once you take care of this dem demonic spirit, you're going to see how fast things will break loose your way. My people, my people, oh, look at the churches in America. They almost do not understand this concept whatsoever. Many do, but most do not. And any church that denies the power of the first order given unto the body of Christ to cast out devils is a church to run from because they don't understand the power, but they deny it they're in. They're afraid, they're afraid, they're afraid. They say, oh, the body of Christ comes in and they're born again, so we don't have to worry about devils. Oh, the enemy may have been evicted out of your spirit, man, but you can oppress your mind. You can oppress your physical flesh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But there are times now that it's no more time to play patty cake with the enemy. It's time to get vicious with him for the kingdom of God suffer the violence and the violent take it by force. And I want my people to take this kingdom back by force. Amen. He's an outlaw spirit. You are the enforcing marshals here on the earth along with my angels. And I want you to dominate the powers of darkness in this day and this hour. I'm about to teach you principles. Yes, yes, in this series that will cause you to rise to the top. And it's going to cause you to rise in a new boldness, and a holy boldness, and you're going to understand that everything starts breaking your way once you remove the obstacle. 
receive, receive the message there in my children. And yes, yes, do so. And go over it oftentimes, because before I send you out in active ministry, you must have a dominating command on how to deal in casting out devils. Not just out of people. I want you to cast them out of many institutions and many things that are happening in your government and other governments. I want you to understand nothing happens by accident. Everything is a work and a work of the spirit world. The things that are happening in the natural, oh, to your distaste, that's because the body of Christ tolerated it and allowed it to happen. But I want you to take authority over all things now, understanding what you are and whose you are. You've got a foundation underneath you now. You know what your rights are. You know that the enemy's been put under your feet, but he's an outlaw spirit and he doesn't pay attention. But you will go forth and you will dominate him. Don't you be afraid of this concept. Don't you be afraid of casting out devils. It will be the easiest thing that you've ever done, for I will be with you in the empowerment of my spirit. I will give you the insight. I will give you the guidance. I'll even tell you what their name is and what their principles are behind them. I'll give it to you. Yes, I'm going to give you keen insight so you know what to do and how to do it. And you're going to enjoy it. It's going to bring you a lot of joy. So receive, receive, receive this message now from me and receive the corresponding message thereafter from Pastor Pat. Receive this now, my children. I love you. I love you. For this is the word of the Lord unto you this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that little word of encouragement. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Alrighty. Let's find out how Jesus did this. Let's take it right from the Master when he was down here in the earth. Now, the only difference here <clears throat> is that Jesus was operating under the law, but by grace, okay? Trying to introduce grace wherever he was. You always remember that. <clears throat> Most of, in fact, all the people that he dealt and cast out devils with were unregenerated. So nobody was born again. So the people who got delivered were not saved, and the people who also ministered deliverance to others, <clears throat> like the apostles and the you know seventy disciples and all that, they weren't born again neither. So you know people who weren't born again but yet had the instruction from God, the you know the promissory note from God, the command and the authority from Jesus Himself could go do it by riding on His back of His dominion and authority. And if they can do it, how much more the believer, who's now one in Christ, where we're on the other side of the cross now, where Satan's been defeated, and he's totally been placed under our feet, okay? But understand, again, he's, an un, he's a, a wild spirit that needs to be dealt with. He's a rebellious spirit that doesn't listen. So he needs to be put into, into his own chains, and we're going to do that. There are a lot of New Testament examples <coughs> where... Paul even cast out devils, okay? So we don't stop. The enemy didn't just say, okay, I'm going to be obedient and be like an alder boy. That's not how he plays the game. So let's find out what Jesus did, and let's look at some of these verses here. Let's start with Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, okay? Hallelujah. In verse 22, he straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side, while well, he sent the multitude away. What did he do? And when he had sent them the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. He got alone with God, okay, got in touch with the head honcho to get counsel. Okay, there's plenty of other scriptures that we're going to cover in a moment, but remember one of the bigger ones that everybody knows off the top of their head, Jesus went and prayed all night long with the Father, then he came down and chose his 12 disciples who they'd be. Amen? Now, why did he do that? Because everything proceeds from the wisdom of God's mind. You might say, okay, so he chose 12 disciples. Why, how is that a big thing? Those 12 disciples are the 12 cornerstones that are up in heaven today, foundational stones that are represented. I mean, he didn't just pick up Joe Blow here and Fred Thomas over there. He got people that were going to be everlasting when we go to heaven their monuments and memorials are there. So it was a big thing. Okay? But notice that Jesus took counsel with his heavenly Father. And usually in that counsel, he had the whole day pre-prepared and shown before him. So when he would come down from that mountain, he already had the whole play out of how the day was, was going to you know, correspond before him. Where he would meet a person, he knew what their necessity was, 
If they were, he was going to confront the devil, he knew what that situ was, situation was and what the name of that spirit was. We're going to see all this. Let's look at another one real quick. Go to Luke chapter 6, verse 12. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And here's another spot where um, Jesus went and healed this individual. Remember the guy with the withered hand in verse 10? I looked round about and all, and he said unto the pertinent man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored, whole as the other. And they were filled with madness. you think they'd be filled with rejoicing that this guy who they knew for probably from the time he was a child had this withered hand. Instead of them being happy for him, they were filled with madness because he healed this individual, you know, probably, in, in fact, verse 1 says, on the Sabbath day. So here, I mean, they're, they're disregarding the miracle and they're swallowing a camel. I mean, it's crazy how these people thought. They were filled with madness and they, what? Consumed one another with what they might do to Jesus, or communed, rather, okay? They communed, how are we going to kill this guy who did this miracle? They had the creator of the universe in front of them, yet they still wanted him out. Verse 12, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. Okay? Got alone with God. And continued all night in prayer to God. <clears throat> now, the body of Christ has a, has a habit of doing the reverse. You need to go to God and find out what he wants you to do, and then it's automatically going to be blessed because it proceeded originally from him. A lot of us, you know, want to put together a project or we want to do something for the Lord here or, so, or there. And then when we got it all ready to go, we go ahead and we start it and we go, now Lord bless me or bless the project. A guy goes, well, what about me? You, you, you know, you're, you're giving me, you're coming to me secondhand. But Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God. Okay. Seek ye first God first. Get his mind, get his counsel on what he wants you to do. If you don't do that, it's destined for failure. You know, the devil's a mastermind at projection. He can make, you know, things look so good to you. Oh, I'm going to take this job now over here. It's, you know, again, it checked all the boxes. Everything looked perfect. More money, more this, more that. But what you didn't know behind the scenes was maybe the, the boss was a, was a crazy person was impossible to work with, was an egotistical maniac. You would have went there and been frustrated and you would have lost all your other accounts or whatever, and then you would have found out that it was not a good thing to do. So you took, you move over there and go, okay, Lord, now bless my job. God said, no, you should have asked me first. I would have told you not to go. And I can't tell you the number of heartaches that people have come to me over the years, and they said, well, I did this and I did that. You know, I laid it before God and I asked him to bless it. I go, did you go to him first, though? 90% of the time or 99% of the time, no. And that's where the problem started. So Jesus went into this mountain <clears throat> to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. Okay, And he got the goods. He got whatever it took in order to meet the necessities of the people. Let's look at one more verse here, and then we're going to start getting on some examples. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16, 416 of Hebrews. This is a good verse. I love it. Now, we all know it. This is the chapter 4 of Hebrews. is talking about the rest of God. Amen? Talking about his high priestly ministry. <clears throat> but in verse 16, it says here, Let us come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, why would he tell us to do that? Because he wants us to go to him first to get some information, get some instruction, and get some counsel. God's all-knowing. He's omniscient. I mean, he's omnipresent. He's got it all. Amen? I mean, you may even got, get counsel from God to do something in a certain way, but then you need to go back to him. Lord, tell me how to execute it, how to put it in a, you know, together. But he says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. See, this is the age of grace. <clears throat> Amen. Not the law, but come to me, you know, knowing that you have access with me. 
because I've already given you at the new birth the abundance of grace and my gift of righteousness. Amen. That you may obtain, notice that you're going to obtain whatever it is that you're going to him for, you're going to get the mercy, which is God has seed, which means his grace to overcome. And you will find this grape to help in time of need. Now, isn't it interesting that God's telling you to go to him? Okay, this is in the New Testament. This is after the cross. And he's still telling you to go to him first. Well, why would we have to go to him, Pastor? I mean, after all, he's underneath our feet, the devil and everything else in life. Remember, don't, don't get mixed up with this. Only the things that pertain unto the plan of redemption are things underneath our feet. That's our inheritance. But we need to go to God just about for everything else in life, though. Okay, don't forget that. Amen? So go to him, get his counsel. Here we are after the cross where we've done last the whole series before this. You know, all about our sitting, sitting down and all that. But he still says, fellowship with me. Come to me. Let, me do, let us do this thing together. Let me give you my insights. So this way, when you go through life, you're going to bypass the landmines. Amen? Don't forget that. Now, let's get started here. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, who are we going to be dealing with in this whole series? Well, you may just say, okay, the devil. Well, that's a little bit too general. Let's find out exactly who we're going to be dealing with. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Now, this whole chapter here is interesting. Now, I, I sent out to most people, and a lot of you have gone over it, and a lot of you have, you know, some of you have not, but you really need to. Because in uh, the teaching on no condemnation, you remember that? Part 17 and 18, I think it was part 18, I went over this chapter, um, no, it was 17, I, I'm, I'm not sure, yeah, it's probably 17, about taking this whole armor. Now, the armor is not the fact that you're supposed to get into a wrestling match with the devil. Because he's defeated, you're at rest, but he's trying to get you to, into a wrestling match with him. He's trying to get you to engage and grapple with him because he's want, he wants you to, to pull you out of your rest and say, you know, you still have to do something about me. Well, we are going to do something about him. We're going to use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and cut him up one side and down the other, and then we're going to what? Cast him down and cast him out. Okay? That's what we're going to do. But I need to have you go over that No Condemnation Part 17. If you don't have Part 18, you know, send me a text. you got to listen to it. You know, start at the 10-minute mark on both those because there are some lengthy prophecies. You don't need to concern yourself with those. I want you to get into the lesson that happened. But in verse 12 here, it says here this, For we wrestle not. I stress the word not. You need to underline that in your Bible. For we wrestle not against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want you to understand <clears throat> the hierarchy here. The principalities are the lowest people on the rung, the demons on the rung. Okay? Then it goes on to say powers. They're the next hierarchy. Then you got a third hierarchy, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And then you got the kingpins who are on top. Now, you may say, well, I'm, I'm confused, Pastor. The, what, the dichotomy I'm going through is that you're explaining the hierarchy of Satan, but yet he's still underneath our feet. Yes, he is. Because where are you sitting? You're positionally in Christ, in heaven, okay? The third heaven, okay? The first heaven. And these demon spirits are below you. So they're still underneath your feet. Okay? Understand that? Now, he may be out there you know, over the unregenerated, but he doesn't have authority over you so long as you know it. He takes, you know, advantage of people who do not know that they're the ones who can dominate him and are already defeated by Christ for them. Okay? So again, these are going to be, you know, for the big kingpins. That, you know, let's do it in reverse order this time. Spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the ones that are over a nation. <clears throat> you know, one of Satan's big kingpins. You know, then the rulers of the darkness of this world <clears throat> are usually, you know, a lower level kingpin over each city of that nation. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next one is powers. And they could be over a town or a community. 
over certain churches. And then you got the principalities of which are the lowest rung and rank, and they are the ones who go out and harass people, put an infirmity on them, cause lack, you know, sitting on their finances, whatever. Okay, they're, they're the low rung people. But I want you to understand something. Until Unless you take authority over all four, before you go casting out devils out of somebody's body or out of some place in your work, okay? A lot of people say, well, I've been praying for um, my, my, my child or uh, my cousin over there or my wife or my husband over there. But if you haven't dealt with these four, this you know, four-pronged hierarchy of Satan, you know, he's just going to send another embassy over. You might deal with that one, cast them out, you can go, okay, next. But take it right from the top and go down. Now, the way Satan runs his kingdom, is, I'm going to give you an insight here, is almost like communism. What our ally, what the Allies found out in World War II was something unique. They found out that if you killed, um, you know, the fascist German general or, uh, you know, their captain that, you know, would, that was guiding a troop, they just went almost like ants bumping into one another, you know, in a tizzy, in a frizzle, and they were easily defeated because they didn't have a chain of command. Where we do, they take out one of our guys, and the next guy moves up in line, the next guy moves up in line, and all the way down to private. But that's not how it works with, with them. Satan, you take out the big guy, he starts frazzling, and then all the other spirits underneath him lose their authority to a great degree. Okay, and a lot of people, and I gave this teaching a long time, time ago, not the one that we're going to be doing, you know, presently, but a lot of this stuff that we're going to cover today, I did before, and a lot of, you know, a lot of us forgot about using these techniques and, you know, about binding the top guy. Then you go to the next guy, and then you go to the next series, and then you go to the lower tier. Okay, and if you don't do that, you're going to waste your time. Now, what do you think Jesus was doing in the mountaintop? With God, God the Father was saying, okay, now you're over here. If you're going to go over to Persia, the Prince of Persia is over there. If you're going to go to Iran, you're going to go to this portion of the Middle East. He would tell them who was the kingpin. Who was the next kingpin? Who was the one over the city? And then who, was the, who, were, who were the spirits he was going to cast out during that day? That's exactly what was happening when Jesus was alone. You may say, well, I don't know if I can do that. It's very simple. You just simply take authority over those people, okay, just as it is. I take authority over the spiritual wickedness in high places over the United States of America. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay, what's next? Okay, whatever spirit that's over western New York or the New York State, which is the next guy in line, well, who's that? The rulers of the darkness of this world. Lord, now as you get going in this, God's going to tell you who they are. In other words, what their name is. Lord, I take authority over the, you know, the ruler of the darkness that's over New York State. I bind up him and all of his cohorts so his command structure is frazzled. In fact, I, I gag him and muffle him, muzzle him so he can't give any orders out. Then what? Go to the next one. Okay? Go to the rulers, um, I'm sorry, the principalities that are over the city. Buffalo, you know, and then your own city, wherever you live. Williamsville, Lancaster, Depew, you know, Lewiston, Grand Island, it doesn't matter where you are, take authority over him and all of his cohorts. Now when you go and cast out that spirit out of, you know, your next door neighbor or somebody in your home or your boss, that guy's going like this because the command structure has been broken. He's got nothing coming, he's got no instruction, he doesn't know what to do, and they're not going to send another imp right after that. Now, you could be successful in casting out a devil and command that spirit never to come back again because you should do that. But if you don't do what I just told you to do and take care of the whole hierarchy, the top guy is just going to send another guy to replace that guy, that spirit. So, But if you do it the way I'm explaining to you right now, then that's not going to happen. Amen? Let's keep going here. So this is what we're dealing with and who we're dealing with. I want you to know that as we, go, as we start our series here. Now, what else are we dealing with? Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 through 23. You should know this; these verses like the back of your hand, starting in 19, which 
what God's, Paul's talking about what God the Father did for Jesus and you and me, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who are to believe in 19, according to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead, and you and me, and set him and us at his own right hand in heavenly places. What are you saying us for? Because Ephesians 2, 6 says that we are raised together with him. Back up to 21 now, 121. So where are we? We're in heavenly places. Where are we? Far above. Didn't I just tell you? You know, the spiritual wickedness in high places are where Satan's kingpins are. Okay? But where are we, it says here. Okay? We're at God's right hand in heavenly places, sitting at his right hand. That's the highest seat in the universe. Everything is underneath you. We're far above, far above, far above, far above, far above, and the devil's far below, far below, far below you, okay? Far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, spiritual wickedness in high places, just the one, just like we talked about, rulers of the darkness of this world, okay? The powers, okay? And principalities. You're far above, and they're far below. Amen. Watch this. And everything that has a name, and that's important because we're not, you know, when we deal with these spirits, they a lot of them have a name. Okay? Like arthritis, cancer, doesn't matter. They got a name. You're above all, everything that has a name. Amen? Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Amen? God gave you carte blanche authority here. And he hath put all things under your feet. And verse 22, all of them, all of them are already underneath your feet. Well, if that's the case, then why do we have to bind them and loose them? Because he still does not play fair. Okay? But when you go into it knowing that he's already defeated and underneath your feet, that gives you a gigantic advantage as far as the confidence level goes, the boldness goes, where your faith resides. You're going into this thing just to enforce them. <clears throat> okay, you're not trying to gain a victory. You're gonna just do what you got to do to apprehend him. There's no battle here. You're just gonna put him under, under your, back under your feet where he belongs. <clears throat> and he's put all things underneath his feet, and we're the feet. We're the body of Christ. And gave Jesus to be our head over all things to the church. Notice he gave all things over to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is what we're dealing with. Okay? But the good news is they're all defeated and defeatable. Okay? One thing I want you to know as we, as we go into this, I don't want you to ever get into a battle to win. No, all we're doing is enforcing Satan's defeat because you've already won and he's already lost. Big difference. Big difference. Okay? Hallelujah. It's all in your mindset. That's why we, did, we spent so much time in the preceding foundational teachings you know, healing is the children's bread, 40 tapes or teachings on that. Then we talked about sitting in Christ Jesus <clears throat> and all that that had to do. Amen? <clears throat> let's keep going here. Let's go, let's find out what Jesus did here. Let's go to Mark chapter 9. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go to Mark chapter 9. Now, um, interesting, remember I told you about <clears throat> who could cast out devils? Well, who has the right to? Now, 99% of the people are going to tell you you better be a believer. And for the most instances, it's, for your protection, it is better. Unless Jesus tells you by promissory note and you're not saved to do it. All right? Now, there's an example that we'll get to maybe in a couple of weeks about the seven sons of Sceva, where they went out and tried to cast out devils watching Paul do it. But they weren't born again, so the devil attacked these seven and ran roughshod over them. All they had to do was get born again where they had the authority over him and everything would have worked out just fine. But I'm saying that to say this, when Jesus was here on the earth, everything still worked and were subordinate to his authority. <clears throat> now watch this one though. I love this. Mark 9, 38 and 39. And John answered him, meaning Jesus, and said, Master... We saw one casting out devils in thy name. Notice he was casting them out. And thy, know what? In thy name, in the name of Jesus. So apparently Jesus was already teaching us in advance. In my name you shall cast out devils, right? So he was already telling these people. 
you, when you go out, you know, this guy might have not been one of the 70 that he chose, but he was listening in. Maybe he was in the crowd. He goes, oh, that's cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what these guys are doing, the 70. Why not? Okay. We saw one cast in all devils in thy name, and he followed not us. In other words, he's not. A, he wasn't in our clique. He wasn't in our group. He wasn't in our denomination. Okay. And we forbade him. Can you imagine telling somebody who's casting out devils, and you say, "Don't you do that"? I mean, that didn't go over with Jesus at all. Okay. I'm surprised um, we didn't see a more strenuous, you know, reply here. And we forbade him because he did not follow in our clique. He wasn't in our group, in our fraternity, you know. Verse 39, but Jesus said, forbid him not. Don't you do that. Okay. I mean, I mean, if Jesus were here in, in, in our day, 2023, and looking at the American church, he'd say, man, I'm, I'm having a hard enough time to get any church to cast out devils, and now you're over here forbidding them? He goes, forbid him not. Watch this. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name. Now notice that casting out devils, Jesus considers it to be a miracle. No man can do these miracles in my name. Notice you've got to use the name of Jesus. He was using the name of Jesus. That's why he was able to do it even though he wasn't in their clique, and even though Jesus did not authorize him specifically, he used the name, and by power of attorney, it was that power was given unto that individual. <clears throat> Amen? How do you know he's using the name? Go back to 38. Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And then Jesus said the same thing in 39. Don't forbid him. Nobody can do a miracle in my name. They can lightly speak evil of me. In other words, this guy's not speaking evil of me. He's promoting me. He's promoting the kingdom. He's promoting the gospel. So as we go out and we learn this stuff, encourage other people to do likewise, part of the gospel and part of promoting the kingdom is casting out devils. <clears throat> Again, once, when I get done teaching you this whole thing, it's going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. It's very, in fact, you're going to get a lot of joy watching these spirits growl before you, all right? When we started our ministry back, you know, I think it was probably back in 79, um, in our first home, I was actually doing it in a church before we went to our home. <clears throat> we were casting out devils. Um, but at this other church, we'd be, on Saturdays, we were praying 12 hours a day in tongues, and then we also did a teaching. <clears throat> So in the middle of this 12 hours, God would tap me on the shoulder, so to speak, and said, I want you to minister unto the people. And so people would get in the line, a healing line and all that. And a lot of the times I would just lay hands on them, but all of a sudden, if somebody had a spirit, <clears throat> I would address that spirit that God told me who it was, and I would cast it out. And the power was so strong, God loves casting out devils so much, that I remember one time, <clears throat> I, I raised my hands like this, and the people that were in the crowd, especially the demonic ones, that we knew the people who were demonic, they fell down and homage to God. They, were, they bowed before him. Okay? And God did that on purpose, so I knew purposely who had an evil spirit in them. So then I, when they would come up, I could deal with the spirit. So God does these things. You're going to see your power go right through the roof when you start doing this stuff. Okay? Hallelujah. So he goes, go forth, you know, nobody's going to speak lightly. I mean, in fact, they're promoting the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Luke chapter 9, and verse 1. Hallelujah. Luke 9, 1. And we'll look at 9, 1 and 2. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority. <clears throat> Notice you got two things here. You got the authority and you got the power. To do what? Over all devils. Now, I want you to understand that word all. You don't have it over just a certain level. You got them over all. Remember Jesus said, tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy? In Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
over all devils and to cure diseases. Now, I want you to see that other connection right there. <clears throat> Did you make the connection? Did you see it? I want you to deal with the spirits and then what? Cure their bodies. He didn't do it in reverse order. He didn't say cure their bodies and then cast out the devil. Most people have infirmities in them because there's still a spirit latently hanging on there or hanging around there. They need to get the boot off their, off their flesh. Well, can a, can a Christian be possessed of the devil? No, but he can be oppressed in his mind, okay, or in his flesh. I mean, how many people do you know, Christians that are in, at Roswell in cancer wards? It's not in their spirit, their spirit man's clean with the Holy Ghost, but it's in their flesh. Well, how is he able to do that? Because they don't know what their rights are. Okay, remember the human body is designed like God's holy place. The holy of holies is the spirit of man. The inner court is your soul, your mind, will, and the emotions. And the outer court, where all the people were, is your flesh. It's the most susceptible to Satan, if you allow it. Okay? But you don't allow it when you're a believer and you know the word and you have a dominating command of the word. That's why part 17 of no condemnation and 18 is mandatory listening to be an accompaniment to the series. You've got to have that. Okay? I'm going to keep throwing that in there till you guys start texting me back. Hey, I just listened to it and it was not only was it I on fire over it, but I can see why it was so important. Verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, I want you to see that connection, too. Remember we did that series on the kingdom? Okay, the kingdom of God is within me and upon me. And it's act I now activate it. When I wake up in the morning, I go like this. I release the glory. I go, the glory of God is all over me, my family, friends, loved ones, and associates, my church members, everybody. And the kingdom of God is within me and upon me, activated. I don't get up without doing that. Okay, I don't do, I don't not do that. Amen. But in verse one, there was two big things. He said, "I'm giving you power and authority." See, it's one thing to have the authority to cast out devils. It's another thing that the resident dunamis power, that means the dynamite power of God, to what excise to back that authority. The Holy Ghost is in you, or the Father that dwells within you, and the person of the Holy Ghost does the work. Amen? And then he said, once you cast out the devil, cure the disease that that person had. Now, how many of us lay hands on people? Why don't, you know, we make declarations from now to Rome and back, and nothing happens. Because you never dealt with the damnable devil that was on their case. Okay? Cast him out. Watch this. In verse 2 again. And then he sent them to preach the kingdom. Now, what is the gospel of the kingdom? To heal the sick and cast out devils. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> that's the gospel, saints. And that's the message that we need to start preaching. You're not preaching the kingdom unless, you, unless you know, you're healing the sick and first casting out devils. And that's just the way it really is. Amen? Look at verse 11. And the people, when they knew it, they followed him and they received him and spake what, unto them. What did they do? Of the kingdom of God and what? Healed them that had need of healing. It's in the kingdom message. In the kingdom, there's no sickness. There's no de de demons. There's no disease, no oppression, depression, nothing. Amen. So when you walk into somebody's home, say this. The kingdom of God is here. That's the first thing out of your mouth. <clears throat> and then go ahead and proceed and heal the sick therein. Amen. If you don't believe me, look at Luke chapter 10. Just as a refresher, go to verse 9. <clears throat> Luke 10, 9. And he's sending them out to the cities in verse 7 and 8. Go into their homes and all that. Eat whatever is set before you. And then in verse 90, climaxes it by saying, And heal the sick that are therein, and say... Unto them, the kingdom of God is come unto you. Amen. The kingdom's there. You've set the atmosphere up for what? Miracles, signs, and wonders. Devil's not in the kingdom, saints. Devil is not in the kingdom of God. You go to heaven, there's no demons there. 
So by you saying that, the devil's already at, on notice and he's shaking, you know, you've cut all of his tentacles off. It's easy just to sweep him away. But he's got no handle to grab on. Amen? Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Since we're in Luke. We'll read, okay, and look at verse 17. We were there. Go to verse 17. Now this is interesting. Remember he sent the 70 out? We just read it. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject or subordinate or in submission unto us through thy name, the name of Jesus. <clears throat> it worked. They went out. Didn't I tell you that in the prophecy or the Holy Ghost said, and didn't I say it to you already, that when you start doing this, you're, you're going to be full of joy. You're going to love it. It's going to, you're going to just be so happy. It's, it's fun. And your joy is going to bubble up within you seeing these people delivered. You're going to say, oh, my goodness, what a blessing that they're finally free. Look what it says that. Look at what it says. And the 70 return again with joy, joy, joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, right? Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruits, okay? With joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They got a charge out of that. They were supercharged. And it's going to put a, a permanent smile on your face like the Joker because you're going to be so happy because of these people's relief. Let's read on. <clears throat> and Jesus replied unto that statement and said, That's cool. But I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. When did that happen? When he got the boot from the Father. Okay. <clears throat> Look at 19. Behold, or listen, or take notice, he said. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, all, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you get that? Now, a lot of people are hurt because they don't do anything. So the devil's able to run a rough shop and play Pac-Man on them. But in this instance, he's saying they're not going to be able to hurt you when you take authority over them. Now, there's much more in that verse. Let's slow down. Let's look at it again, 19. Behold, I give you power. Now, that Greek, the Greek word for that word power there is exousia or authority. In other words, I'm giving you the authority, or in this case, power of eternity, because they weren't born again yet. But we have the authority because now <clears throat> Jesus is now one with us, okay? I give you the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the, there's that word power again, and all the dunamis, okay? All the strength that the enemy uses to, you know, he has power too, a limited power, but he does have power. And he can do fake miracles, so on and so forth. And he'll try to deceive the saints in the book of Revelation and other people. But notice the second power is not the same word, Greek word. It's, it's, it's uh, dunamis, like dynamite. Whatever dynamite he has, you, you, your dynamite's going to be bigger than his. So you've got the power and the backing. You've got the authority and the power to cast out devils. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So don't be afraid to do this. You got the master's words in red letter here. This is Jesus talking to you, telling you when you do this, don't be afraid. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's only when you don't cast out devils that you're going to get hurt. It's the same thing with Adam. He acquiesced his authority and he got hurt in the garden. <clears throat> Use it. Punish the devil. Verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice, okay? Not that the spirits are just subject unto you. That's a good thing, he's saying. Don't worry about that. That's, you know, that's cool. That's of me. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I don't know if you understand the significance of that statement. Here we are before the cross. Nobody was born again. And I told everybody in other teachings that I've had, that everybody's name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life before, you know, you know, before they got saved, whether they get saved or not. Now, if you don't receive Christ, you took your name out. But God's a faith God and believed that everybody was going to get saved first. These people weren't born again yet. 
He's saying, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven already. Okay? And that is a good thing, because if your name's written there, you're going there, and the only thing that could take it out is by you refusing to do what God asks you to do, and the main one is not to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. <clears throat> but your names are there. They know you. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing. Satan knows you too in his cohorts. If your name's up there on that directory, they know you down here. In fact, remember that seven sons of Sceva deal I was talking to you about? They went to cast out this devil, and again, when we get there, we're going to get into it deeper. You know what the devils told them? They used that guy's voice and they said this, Paul I know, Silas I know, and they named maybe, maybe one other guy. You know, Jesus we know, but we don't know you. Why? You're not born again. Your name's not written in, or it's written in heaven, but you're, you're rejecting it. You haven't got, you don't have the earmark. You don't have the seal of God upon your forehead. Remember I told you what the seal upon our forehead is? Every one of you who are saved has the name, the Word of God. Word of God. Because Jesus is the Word of God. He's the head Word of God. We're the body Word of God. Was well, that in the Bible? Of course it is. Well, Pastor, where? Okay. One second, side journey here. Go to the book of Revelation towards the back of the book. Hallelujah. Verse 20, uh, chapter 22. Revelation 22. Hallelujah. Verse 3 and 4. And there shall be no more curse there in heaven. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Well, it doesn't say the word of God. Sure it does. Go to chapter 19 of Revelation. Okay. Hallelujah. Verse 13, 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the... His name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. Okay? And now go back to Revelation 22, 4 now. And they shall see his face, and his name, the Word of God's name, shall be in their foreheads. Get it? Devils know that. But then, the next thing that comes to their mind, do they know the Word <clears throat> that they've been stamped with? Hmm. Well, you can answer that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's move on here. Matthew chapter 10. Let's go there. A similar verse, but a little bit different twist to it. Verses 1, <clears throat> 7, and 8. And when he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now that word unclean spirits is going to come up a lot when <clears throat> Jesus is, when he casts out devils. <clears throat> now you may say, what is an unclean spirit? Well, they do a, a, a multitude of nasty things. Not only do they strap a th you know, infirmity on people, <clears throat> but they deal in the arena of, of lusts, uh, all kinds of damnable things that we're going to go, get into detail on later on. But, you know, he... he really hates these spirits. You can tell the more he uses them. You're going to notice in that thing I sent out to you yesterday, I put in there as one of the spirits that need to be dealt with is the unclean spirit. All right? Let's read this again. And he called unto them his twelve disciples, and he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Okay? To cast them out. Not to coddle, not to play patty cake, okay? But to cast them out. And what? Look at the next phrase. And to do what? And to heal. Once you cast them out, now they're candidates for healing. You got rid of the infirmity that was causing it. And all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I, I gave you this story many, many years ago. This one guy, um, he was in college. I think he was playing football college. And he got tackled in the back from a really weird angle and herniated his disc and 
he was in really tremendous pain. At the moment that happened, a spirit of infirmity got right in there and lodged right where that inflammation was. And this guy couldn't get relief no matter what he did. He was a Christian. He went and, um, to all these healing lines. The greatest evangelist of the day laid hands on his back. That squatola happened. Finally, we ran into Kenneth Hagin. Hagin didn't do anything but get the mind of God first. He goes, Lord, what's up? What do you want me to do? He goes, he's got a spirit of infirmity that just sit in there, squatting there, thinking he has a right there, those squatters' rights. Cast out the spirit of infirmity, and, watch, and then his healing will ensue immediately. So kind of took authority over that spirit of infirmity, cast it out, laid hands on him, the guy was totally healed. But all those years he suffered because the Christians were too dull of mind to know that they first had to deal with the spirit. Okay? They first had to deal with that spirit of infirmity. Then they would get their healing. It says it right here in verse 10. Okay? He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner. I want you to see that. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. All manner. All. Everything that you can concoct in your mind or think. Anything that happens to people today <clears throat> that they try to in inflict on the you know, populace. <clears throat> doesn't matter what name it is. He said all manner. Okay? Remember? Above every name that is named. Look at verse 7. <clears throat> and 8. And as you go, preach saying, this is what I want you to do when you go to these people's homes or before you minister to them, say this. Say the kingdom of heaven is at hand or the kingdom of God's now here. Set the parameter and the atmosphere. Put heaven's atmosphere there. First, when you do that over a demon, he starts shaking. He goes, oh no, if he starts to cast me out now, I'm done. Because now it's not the earth. The earth is under Satan's jurisdiction, the God of this world. So when you supplant that with the kingdom of God now, that's an overlay over this kingdom, that devil lost his jurisdiction there. <clears throat> okay, now watch this. As you go saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, look at the next verse, 8. Look what happens. Look, saints. Heal the sick. First thing. Okay. Amen. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. He says this so matter of fact. Oh, by the way, um, here's what you need to do. And oh, by the way, cast out devils. Freely you've received this from me. It was a gift from me to you. So freely give out this free gift to them. It's not hard. You didn't earn it. You didn't struggle to get it. So you can't lose it. Just simply give it out. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Amen. Hallelujah. Give it out, saints. It's a love gift from God to you, to them. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. It will close. Let me just read the first scripture to you, part of it. We'll close. Pick it up there next week because we're out of time for today. Hallelujah. This is a scripture here or a, a scenario where Jesus just got done from the mountain of transfiguration. So he's full of the glory. His disciples were below, you know, ministering to the people but there was this it seemed to be a hard case came up to them okay long story short jesus said you know they said in verse 18 we brought them to your disciples and they couldn't cast out the spirit and jesus said oh faithless generation called them a faithless generation i think it was also talking mainly to his disciples you got to be kidding me so jesus had some small talk going on and then Jesus said in 23, verse 23, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him who believes. He wasn't talking about the Father there. Because obviously if the Father had the faith and the belief, he would have already cast him out. So he was saying, if you know, if you can believe, you know, if you can believe, 
like he was talking about himself. Jesus is talking about himself here. If you can believe, like I can, I'm paraphrasing, okay, all things are going to be possible to him that believeth. I'm the one who can believe for you. In other words, he's trying to get the Father's eyes off of the Son who was tormented and onto the Deliverer, Jesus. And then the Father said in verse 24, Lord, I believe, in other words, in you. How do you know, Pastor? He's not talking about his own faith there because of the next phrase the Father said. I believe, help my unbelief. Well, that's stupid. Why wouldn't one sentence he'd say, I believe, but not help my unbelief? Which one is it? He was talking about Jesus there. No, Lord, I believe you're the one who can believe for me. I believe that you have that capability. You do the believing for me. Remember how many times we talked about in our teaching on the kingdom? Jesus would always ask them the question, the blind people, do you believe that I am able to do this? Same thing here, just worded a little bit different. If thou can believe that I can do it, I'll do it. So the father said, sure, I believe that you can do it, but help my unbelief because I certainly can't. Okay? So watch this in 25 in closing. And Jesus saw that the people come running together. He rebuked that foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him! And enter into him no more. Now notice that last part, and enter into him no more. A lot of people, when they cast out devils, forget to tag that on. You know what happens? The devil goes out for a couple days, comes right back and jumps on her case. I know for sure that people have gone to healing crusades, had the devil cast out of them, the minister did not put that last part on, and that devil was sitting, waiting on top of their car for them to come into their car. As soon as they got in the car, the devil went right back into them. Because he didn't say that last part. And enter into him no more. And the second thing that would have prevented that spirit from going into him, get a hold of the what? Bind the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places, so he can't send another imp right behind him. Amen? All right, let's unhook there. We'll pick it up next week. And we're just starting here. <clears throat> we're going to get into some great aspects shortly about what we're covering here. We're going to go over more examples about what the Lord was able to do. And then as we get all this foundation done for you, I'm going to show you how to do it personally and individually. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this message. We thank you, Lord God, for your insight and revelation. We thank you, Lord God, that the saints you know, hear this. They get it down. They have supernatural retention, memory, recall. They're hearers and doers of the word and work and bear fruits of righteousness. And they're going to cast out these devils very easily. And the prophecy, you said, any delay is a demonic delay. So if there's a delay, then it's a, de a devil sitting there somewhere. We just need to get your mind on who it is, what it is, and cast them out. After we deal with the kingpins above. Okay? Thank you, Lord, for that. Hallelujah. Okay, saints, <clears throat> get your communion ready and also um, your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is going to be exciting. I'm telling you, when, you get, when we were casting out devils all the time, we had so much joy we could hardly contain it. We were laughing so much. We were, so, you know, it was just almost like you know we had the giggles only to see the relief that they gained. It was so powerful to see them no more under that pain, you know, the, the hurt. That they were finally, you know, given a breakthrough. Alrighty. If you got the bread, say this after me, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus is what, whom I behold. He's my everything. He's my all and all, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that my body is his body. I think every organ, tissue, and cell is perfect as his body is. I thank you that my DNA and genes, I have his genetic salvation and it's a prime of life. I thank you that my youth is renewed just like his is and my body parts do not grow old or worn out. If he's at 33 and a half, I am by faith too. I have it now. I got it at the new birth. Amen. And the, time, the moment I received him as Lord and Savior, it became real to me, and I'm the righteousness of God. He added it unto me, and now I'm in my seated position of rest. And I thank you, Lord, for that. I break the power of the devil, I bind him, cast him out, and I loosen the ministry of angels concerning this. 
You know, always use that as a tag along when you're done and you any of your declarations. Satan is bound and I loosen the ministry and angels concerning this. Okay? But I'm gonna drill into your head next week, just getting up those kingpins taken care of. Again, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? Especially them. Then we'll work, you know, give you the powers, then the principalities. Once they're taken care of, a lot of this stuff is going to fall into your hands very easily. Hallelujah. So, Father, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory for all this by and through the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may partake of the bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, in this cup, in this cup, Lord God, we see before the very mercy seat of Almighty God, the shed blood of the Lord, and the blood of speaking on our behalf. It's advocacy, talking about the work that the blood did for us. It sealed the deal. It signed the receipts. The enemy has nothing common when he sees the blood. We speak it over our lives, spirit, soul, and body, financially, physically, socially, and economically. The blood of Jesus over our eyes, nose, mouth, lips, fingers, and hands, protecting us, Lord God, from any variants, any COVID issues, Lord God, or anything to deal with respiratory issues or any disease for that matter. And our, our immune system moves with the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and counsel of Almighty God with the, thanks, with the power and the faith of the Father God the Son of the living God, Jesus, and the glory of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God, that we stand in Christ before you in his innocence, his righteousness, and his sinlessness, Father. And we speak the blood of Jesus over all situations where the death angel sees it and has to pass over. Now, the blood can also act as a suffocating mechanism over the devil. Lay it on top of him. Okay, He has no answer. He goes into a tizzy when the blood is applied over a situation or a person. So, Father, we thank you for all these things that the enemies overcome and overcome and more overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. We testify personally to what the Word says that the blood has done for us and has put us into a place of excellence in the Father. We thank you, Father, for all these things by and through the blood of Jesus now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May partake of the cup. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hey, saints, we'll do the tithe and get yourselves also ready for the 91st Psalm. Those who of you are not in our Zoom room do not have that on your screen, but on the, on the YouTube, you will have it to use your own tablet, phones, or Bible themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name forevermore. <clears throat> God is good. All, All right, saints, we're going to be praying over our ties. As you notice, when we started our <coughs> service today, Marty led the service, so we're happy to have him back from vacation. Did a wonderful time down there. Uh, the only thing I'm upset with him about, and I'm quite upset about it, that he didn't bring the child back with him so we could munch on him for a little while. So the Italians got to pinch those cheeks and kiss him, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's hard on us when we don't have that happen, you know. So, you know, we would have only borrowed him for a couple of weeks and then we would have sent him back home. But, but we're glad he's here and um, he's my blessing forever. I love him. All right, so let's pray together here. Father, in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord God, that we take this basket of our tithes and offerings and lift it up before the Father God. And we say this before him, that, Lord, in our giving, after the order of Melchizedek, we receive a thousandfold blessing and a thousandfold return now. And we thank you, Lord, for it. I thank you, Lord God, that 
The silver golden cattle of a thousand hills are ours today. And Father, we have it. And we thank you, Lord God, that all debt is out the window. All, all mortgage and credit card debt, school debt, college debt, Lord God. Father, it's all canceled. And we're going to be taking authority over those spirits as well. <clears throat> so we can get breakthrough, Lord God, in the financial arena. God has all kinds of verses for that. And he wants his church walking in an abundance of all finances right now. He's going to break his power off of our our businesses, our jobs, everything that we set our hand on to. The glory of God is going to be flowing and Satan will be groveling underneath because he can't stop what we're doing. And the finances have to be let loose and let abundantly fall upon his children. And great wealth transfer, burst of it hitting us now. Lord God, giving us relief. Hallelujah. And the angels of God are going out in the northeast, south, and west from expected and unexpected sources and bringing in this financial wealth. We say unto these angels, money coming to us now, money you're here now, and all of us have this money now in the name of Jesus and receive it now in Jesus' name. Father, we take authority over the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and bind and break their power and authority off of our finances. And I command those angels, they have free reign, free loosing to give us, Lord, an abundance of all things now in Jesus' name. We thank you that the Father God we go before the throne of grace and he releases his grace upon us. Speak in love and life and breakthrough. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God is a God of justice. He gives us the, the gavel goes down and I decree and we walk in the abundance of this financial prosperity now. And Lord, make war on the devil and all these cohorts and people that have tried to stop us from walking in our billionaire status. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Alrighty, saints, we're going to do the 91st Psalm now. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Here we go. <clears throat> we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High do lodge, abide, and stay under the shadow of El Shaddai. We do say of the Lord, He is our refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him do we trust. Surely He has delivered us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He's covered us with His feathers and under His wings do we trust. His truth is our shield and buckler. We're not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall never come nigh us. O our eyes shall behold, and see the reward of the wicked, because we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the Most High, our habitation. There shall no evil befall us, neither any plague come nigh our dwelling, who has given his mighty angels charge over us to keep us in all thy ways. They shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against the stone. We shall tread upon the lion and add our young lion and dragon do we trample under feet. Tread it upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because he set his love upon me, therefore have I delivered him. I have set him on high, because he had known my name. He has called upon me, and I have answered him. I am with him in trouble. I do deliver them and honor him. With long life do I satisfy them, and show them my continued, ongoing, everlasting, perpetual, and eternal salvation, which is our Jesus, our health, healing, wholeness, soundness, deliverance, preservation, safety and assurance, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. We pray over your week. Father, I thank you that the saints go forth with a fabulous week, Lord God, of rest, success, triumph, victory, prosperity, health, and wholeness. Everything they touch prospers as they start putting these principles to work and using the summary sheet I sent out yesterday. I expect massive, massive breakthroughs, Lord God. Massive breakthroughs. And we thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, as the saints travel, either individually or by their cars, whether they walk or drive, that the hand of God is all over them. The blood of Jesus is all over them. The angels of God are above, beneath, and front, behind, and the sides of the car, or whether they walk or drive as well. We also pray for the unrighteous, amen, for the heathen have been given unto us as our inheritance, and we pray for them as well. And also, Lord God, 
that the saints have supernatural retention, memory, recall, and they take this message into their whole week or work week, Lord God, and they go over the message so they can get this thing down. This is very important that they get this foundation down so the rest of the series will make a lot of sense for them and to them. So we thank you, Lord, for all that. We expect breakthrough and divine protection, Lord God, in every arena of life. And also we take authority, Lord God, over any plot of the enemy, no matter what his wickedness is. We break his power and authority already in advance for that. We thank you for our victory now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, in closing, saints, I want to let you know that we thank you for spending your time with us and letting us be your pastors uh, here at Spirit Word Ministries. We're here to help you if you need prayer. Uh, um, call, send us a text, email, and do what we can to get everything out to you as quickly as possible. Some of you have been calling, and some of you have been texting a lot, and so I think that what we sent out yesterday is going to help tremendously as well. Um, that summary sheet and the Supreme Court. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I want to let you know until we you know meet again next week, I want God's richest and best be yours. His peace be upon you. And I thank you, saints, for all that you are. We thank you for your prayers and your support as well for us, too. We well, give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it. By and through the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. See you next week, saints. Bye-bye now.